and Nairobi Securities Exchange has received regulatory approval to launch a derivatives market. The NEC, the main entry point for foreigners seeking to invest in East Africa, has been grappling with the challenges of setting up a derivatives market for years. The NEC will be the second exchange in sub-Saharan Africa after Johannesburg to launch trading in derivatives. The approval follows the successful completion of a six-month derivatives pilot test phase conducted between July and December 2018 and resolution of key issues that emanated from the test phase. And on domestic commodities front, our focus is on seafood prawns and shrimps to be precise. Now the global demand for prawns and shrimps has been increasing over the years owing to its exclusivity and nutritional values. Nigeria is blessed with an abundant supply of shrimps due to its extensive territorial water and continental shelf. Yet it produces only 12,000 tons of shrimps. That's 0.5% of global production. Well, let's bring in Aisha Bello, one of the research analysts with Financial Derivatives Company, to tell us why this is so. Hello, Aisha. Good afternoon. So we're talking about um, shrimps. Yes, Nigeria is filled with abundant supply of shrimps, yet it produces only 0.5% of global production. Why so? And are there any lessons to be learned from the leading producers in the world? We have like China... India and Thailand. Shrimps and prawns are important seafood consumed globally. You know, uh, they are usually more expensive than fishes. Despite Nigeria having potential for abundant supply, you know, we still supply very little. Why one begins to wonder why then is this so? This is due to a couple, to a couple of reasons. First is the um, discovery and the exploration of oil and gas. You know, it's that's caused a lot of damage to our aquaculture through in the form of um, water pollution. Second is the um, displacement of workers. You know, most youths prefer to work in um, in an oil and gas industry rather than be a fish farmer. You know, these are the reasons why we have little production. Meanwhile, leading um, producers of shrimps are mostly Asian countries. We have the likes of um, China, India, and Thailand. Basically, these countries, they've averted water pollution, they've gone back into the deep seas, they've made revenues and plowed back these revenues in order to increase it. So, you know, Nigeria can learn from these countries by, you know, um, solving the issue of water pollution, go into the deep sea and then make revenue and then invest this revenue back into the um, production of streams in order to increase the yield. Okay, Aisha, a quick one. Shrimp trawling is predominant in the South-South region, yet on the average, the region has the highest unemployment rate, about 31.3%. Why the disparity, and is there any chance that shrimp trawling will expand and create more jobs? Shrimp trawling is a major for the discovery of the Usually very capital-intensive and requires skills. And for... It's uh, for us to, for the country to, you know, expand production and for this stream trailing to create more jobs. We, we need to, the government needs to provide the capital for the farmers, you know, for the fish farmers. Also, you know, they need to train people, marine training, because it's not just the regular fish farming that we know, it's to require skills. So there needs to be special boats training and then adequate capital for us to expand and then this will provide more jobs for the rising unemployment rates. Okay, thank you very much um, for your time, um, Aisha Bello. Our the South African Reserve Bank has launched a financial stability review document which in line with the bank's objective to protect the value of the currency, analyzes and reviews potential threats to the economy. According to the document, both domestic and external factors directly affect potential growth and need to be treated parallel. New technology has also brought new challenges that government needs to keep in mind and place strategies to eliminate potential threats. And for updates on the equities trading today, here is Temple with the details. Hello, Temple. Good afternoon. Now, inauguration over. What's the way forward for the market? Well, the market will be expecting some good policy direction from the federal government uh, now. 
Uh, that's something that will be expected to shift the market going forward. But as we speak, the market is uh, negative. It opened quite positive this morning, up to some 0.34% in terms of the uh, key benchmark indices performance. But right now, uh, things are uh, dull. We, market is down some 0.5%. Uh, and of course, uh, that's due to some profit taking that we've seen across uh, major counters of the markets. I recall that last week, uh, 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 the day before the public holiday, uh, quite a number of stocks actually you know, performed very uh, excellently. So that has given opportunity for some investors, smart investors, to quickly take profit, uh, having done their valuation. And of course, you'll be seeing a bit of more of a, a, a portfolio rebalancing as well. Uh, so now, uh, the reason why we saw the dip in the market again is because Dangote Cement experienced some, uh, uh, some, some decline in the share price. Uh, of course, a couple of other uh, companies, uh, basically the high cap stocks, GT Bank is down by more than 4%. Uh, you got Zenith Bank, uh, uh, some sell down on uh, Zenith Bank. There's about 29 million units of Zenith Bank shares. You know, that also uh, contributed to the depreciation that we're having in the market. However, there's still some sense of uh, buy sentiment, given the portfolio rebalancing uh, uh, kind of interest that we are seeing in the market. Some investors are also buying Nestle POC, uh, which is also uh, raising MTN, is also on the gainers chart. And you've got UBA and Access Bank. Of course, Access Bank, uh, given the fact that it is uh, looking to redeem its uh, uh, bond on the 24th of June. So that is something really positive for the share price of that company, which is currently up by some 0.79%. At the end of the day, uh, if we should record uh, some losses in the uh, key benchmark indices, it should be some kind of mild losses, not as deep as uh, we used to have before now, which explains uh, the kind of expectation that investors, the traders here, do have in the market on the fact that uh, they are waiting for some kind of good policy direction from the federal government. Jimizu. All right. Let's see. Uh, wish for better things coming out of it. Thank you, Temple. And with that, we draw the curtain on today's edition of the program. Thank you for watching. I'm Chimizie Obi. You're welcome.